For a company that pioneered the hybrid automobile 25 years ago, you would think that Toyota and its Lexus luxury brand would have a dozen or so EVs by now. But that's not the case, because it wasn't until recently that Toyota fully committed to the electric car idea. And so this new RZ is the first fully electric Lexus. And it's really quite promising, but not quite there. Wheel size, aerodynamics, and ambient temps impact the driving range of all vehicles, but these factors become more volatile when it comes to EVs. That's why when shopping the RZ, you'll find that each of the four trims carries its own specific number in that regard. With the new base model RZ300E front-wheel drive fitted with 18-inch wheels rated at a respectable 266 miles, and this top-of-the-line RZ450E all-wheel drive atop 20-inch wheels rated at only 196 miles. Quite a significant difference indeed. Now putting the range talk aside for a moment, the RZ is a futuristically styled, fun to drive, well executed small SUV. From a size perspective, you can think of it as a squattier RX with more cargo volume. It presents nearly eight inches of ground clearance and can put away 60 miles per hour in five seconds flat via twin electric motors discharging a combined 308 horsepower. The lavishly curated cabin delivers expanded spaciousness in the EV style and is shown here trimmed in thunderstorm and macadamia colored ultra suede, a soft touch, durable plant-based synthetic which looks oh so fitting in the RZ. Pricing begins at $55,000 and tops out here, fully loaded, with this trick panorama roof and its dimming function, an illuminated front badge, headlamp washers, puddle lamps, and the upcharge ether paint for an MSRP of $67,675 before Lexus puts its own $7,500 on the table, mimicking an EV federal tax credit, ostensibly reducing the sticker of this one to about $60,000. As a front drive based EV, you'll find the charge port located conveniently near the driver's door, allowing for three levels of electricity ingestion, 120 and 240 volts, both of which can be accomplished of course at home, and then level three public fast charging with a rate that maxes out at 150 kilowatts. So not the fastest available, but at 30 minutes to go from zero to 80%, certainly not slow. As is the case with most EV owners, having a level 2 charger installed in your garage or thereabouts is the most efficient and convenient way to get the job done, taking no more than 9.5 hours to reach a 100% charge. But what that exactly accomplishes here is a bit perplexing. I have no idea why I'm only seeing about 165 miles here on a full charge when it's rated at 197 in these near perfect ambient temperatures. That's unacceptable at $67,000. And that's regardless of what you feel is an acceptable range for most American drivers. You just can't be coming in at 30 under at this price point. Cold weather and winter driving can sap as much as 40% of an EV's fuel economy, but that hasn't been the case this week. So I'm not exactly sure what's at play here. The driving experience itself is excellent with that gutsy level of acceleration we've come to expect from EVs blended with really respectable handling chops. But perhaps best of all is the natural braking feel you get here, which often eludes EVs. But this morning, I woke up to only 135 miles on a full charge, and that is most definitely a problem. The 20-inch wheels, a no-cost option or no friend to this EV in terms of fuel economy, the RZ450E with the standard 18-inch wheels is rated at 220 miles. This Elvis-inspired cabin is awesome, and it feels as good as it looks. For instance, this neoprene-esque steering wheel, which is both really soft and tactile. And then these seats are crazy comfortable. And check this out. This glass roof here turns opaque at the press of a button. That's pretty cool. But on the other hand, I do not love these vague steering wheel controls for things like the radio and the cruise control, which are directly tied to the head-up display, meaning you've got to look up here and move your thumb around to see what you're doing. So on the one hand, it's good that you are focused on the road, but on the other hand, it's still very distracting. And then this latest Toyota infotainment system can be frustrating at times. 
For instance, it's the only one I've ever experienced that does not mute the music when interacting with Surrey and Apple CarPlay. Otherwise, the cabin is fresh and spacious with radiant heating. The climate concierge to automatically trigger items like heated seats, beautifully supportive seats, and true three across rear seating. Gotta love EVs for that. Other than the incessant beeping, Lexus is tied to actions such as reversing the vehicle, it's a quiet, peaceful, comforting, and potentially sporting experience. So I love the look, the drive is above reproach, and the pricing isn't insane. But the battery's performance is certainly curious. By the way, the Toyota BZ4X, which I also tested a while back, is this car's corporate cousin and is worth cross-shopping if you can live without some of the niceties. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes.